After the debacle of Saratoga, General Sir Henry Clinton once again set his eyes on Charleston, South Carolina. He figured one more push, just one more southern campaign would be enough to potentially win the war for the British. And they honestly believed that most of the people in the southern colonies, mainly Georgia, North Carolina, and South Carolina, were loyalists. And so they would go down through the south. It'd be a pretty, not a cakewalk. They didn't expect a cakewalk, but they expected it to be a lot easier, a lot less resistance than there was in the north, especially after Saratoga. And they expected to get a lot of loyalist reinforcements, and they would march through Virginia, take it, go through Maryland, Pennsylvania, and slowly take the colonies from the south up. One of the men who was also given command for the southern campaign was, at this point, Lieutenant Colonel Bannister Tarleton. Now, Tarleton had served with John Graves Simcoe for a while in the Queen's Rangers, mainly in the Mounted Light Infantry Division of the Queen's Rangers, because the Queen's Rangers also had uh, hussars. And so Tarleton, when he was given his command of roughly around 100 mounted infantry, they were that. They were mounted light infantry. And General Sir Henry Clinton, he didn't know Tarleton very well. They didn't interact as much as Tarleton did with some of the other officers, mainly John Andre uh, and a few others. But he liked his spunk. He really liked how aggressive he was. And he could tell that Tarleton had that look in the eye and he had the brains to achieve victory no matter what. Even though Tarleton didn't exactly have the military training or the military etiquette of some of the other traditional British officers. So when he gave Tarleton these 100 dragoon, dragoons, he told them, you know, these are going to be light infantry that's mounted. But Tarleton didn't want that. He wanted sharpshooters that were also excellent swordsmen and great horseback riders because he knew in the southern campaign, as he had experienced a few times in the northern campaigns, there will be situations where you will need sharpshooters. There will be situations where you will need excellent swordsmen. There will be times where you will need great horseback riders. So Tarleton quickly changed what his British Legion was, and that's what it was ultimately named was the British Legion. And originally they were going to basically look like the 17th Light Dragoons. They were going to have the red coats with the gold buttons, uh, they were just going to miss the skull on top of their helmets. As were 17th, which is where Tarleton got his star. If you remember our first episode, they had the skulls on top of their helmets. Tarleton chose to go with a bit more of a Queen's Rangers look. He really liked how they were uh, camouflaged against the trees. Now, of course, you're on horseback and you still have these bright buckles and all that stuff. So you, there's only so much camouflage you can have, but Tarleton wanted the green uniforms, especially the darker green uniforms, to try and blend his troops in as much as possible. Because in the early stages of the British Legion, they didn't just fight mounted. There were a lot of skirmishes where they fought on foot and where Tarleton fought on foot. But by the time we get to the Southern Campaign, Tarleton pretty much got rid of that until the British Legion got its British Legion infantry. So as Tarleton, before they went down to Charleston, South Carolina, actually a few miles south of Charleston, South Carolina, for the second invasion of the American Southern Colonies, Tarleton drilled his men. And one thing you have to understand when I talk about this, this was someone, Tarleton, who did not have formal military training aside from maybe a month or two. This was someone who did not spend hours, weeks, days, months in a classroom studying tactics of 18th century warfare. This is someone who wanted to be in the conflict. He wanted to see action. He wanted to serve his country and do what it took to win the battle. So that's how he quickly got to America. And so a lot of this, he was learning off the fly. But if you remember in our last episode, John Graves Simcoe, who was head of the Queen's Rangers, taught him a lot more than anyone else in the entire war would teach Tarleton and so a lot of his teachings that he would pass on to his British Legion would be the teachings he got from John Graves Simcoe and I think in order to fully understand the actions of the British Legion in the southern campaign you have to understand where they came from their foundations their training and Tarleton originally didn't foresee you know, the British Legion expanding into this huge network of various commanders, different sects, almost like their own corps with different divisions, different regiments, different companies. He, it was originally envisioned as, you know, almost like uh, Light Horse Harry Lee's Legion 
or William Washington Second Continental Light Dragoons, actually Third Continental Light Dragoons, excuse me, it was just going to be one unit. It would just have the British Legion name to it instead of Tarleton's Legion, Tarleton's Dragoons, or different things like that, even though they would end up picking the nicknames Tarleton's Legion later on in history, but to my knowledge and my research, the only name that they were actually called during the war was Tarleton's Raiders. Now, there were times during British dispatches, I've actually read a few of them, where they would refer to Tarleton's Legion specifically as the Legion. So pretty much for purposes, when I talk about the Southern Campaign, I'll talk about the Legion, or I'll talk about Tarleton's Raiders, because, you know, this series is focusing on Lieutenant Colonel Bannister Tarleton. Now, he didn't get his Lieutenant Colonel ranking officially until after Monk's Corner. Now, Monk's Corner, of course, we'll talk about that on the next episode of Bannister Tarleton, but he was given basically the name, the title, when he was in New York with General Sir Henry Clinton shortly before they went south. So I hope you all have enjoyed this episode, and I want to make this to kind of give you a bit of a background on how the British Legion came to be, and the fact that, you know, these were men that were from Hussar units, Light Dragoon units, Light Infantry mounted units, and Hussar units. It was a very, it was a mixed match that they expected to work, and surprisingly it did. It was one of the few choices that General Sir Henry Clinton made in preparations for Charleston, South Carolina that actually ended up panning out in the long run.